Columbia County News. the story breaks. Wherever the news goes, Columbia County News will bring it to you. With Debbie Corsilia and Mark Johnson with sports. And now, here's Debbie. Welcome to Columbia County News, the place for the latest in local information. I'm your host, Debbie Corsilia. To keep you in touch with your community, keep it right here. Columbia County United Way Executive Director Suzanne Arnitz has announced that the 1998 drive has reached 71% of its goal. So far, $220,100 has been raised for health and human care organizations in Columbia County. The campaign will continue through December. And anyone interested in contributing can mail their donations to United Way at 71762 Columbia River Highway Suite 6, Rainier, Oregon, 97048. World AIDS Day is almost upon us, and CCTV's Chuck Purvis interviewed Gracie Horton of the Columbia County AIDS Prevention Team. And here is a look. Thanks, Debbie. Uh, I'm here today with Gracie Horton, and Gracie works for Columbia County Public Health and she's also the AIDS Outreach Coordinator over there. And one of the reasons that we've invited her to the studio today is because World AIDS Day is coming up uh, in December, uh, right? Yes, on December 1st. Okay, and uh, are there going to be any activities here in Columbia County for yeah. World AIDS Day? Yeah, the um, AIDS Prevention Team will be coordinating all of the World AIDS Day activities. There will be two informational displays at the St. Helens Bookshop and the Columbia Technology Center. The AIDS Prevention Team has red ribbons and brochures available for anybody that would like to distribute them. And our banner will be outside Scapoose near the Fred Meyer. Okay. Well, you know, uh, several years ago, of course, AIDS was in the news almost daily. And like every other disease we seem to have, it, it hasn't been so much in the forefront, perhaps. But really, this is still a very serious problem and a very serious disease. Yes. Um, I mean, there <clears throat> really is uh, no cure. We're getting better at controlling it, but we don't have a cure. Right. Um, the best defense against HIV right now is um, prevention through education. And you work over at uh, Columbia County Public Health. Yes, I do. And could you tell us just a bit about what services the public health has as far as AIDS, either uh, treatment or uh, prevention, counseling, that sort of thing? Um, HIV testing is available at Columbia County Public Health. Um, the testing is on a sliding scale. Um, if anybody is not able to pay for an HIV test, they will not be refused. Um, if they do want to come in for testing, they won't be refused simply because they will not because they can't pay. And the cost of the test is about $26 That's full correct. price. That's correct. And these tests are kept in strict confidence over at public health. They're done, as I understand you told me, a blindly with a number. Right. Um, your results are linked to a number. And when you come in for your results, you simply present that number to the counselor, who will then give you your results. And in, in coping with AIDS, it's, of course, very important to catch the disease as early as possible, isn't it? That's true, yes. Um, the best course um, is to, to know whether you are HIV positive or not so you can go in for treatment, um, which increases your chance um, for survival. Okay. And what other services? Are there any other services at public health? Um, we do do case management and referrals, um, depending on um, what services a client may need. Okay, good. Now, besides uh, the services at public health, then uh, we also have the AIDS prevention team. And you're the coordinator for the Columbia County AIDS prevention team? Yes, I and am. And could you tell us just a little bit about what that is? Yeah, I'd be happy to. Um, the AIDS prevention team is a group of volunteers um, from all over Columbia County who 
Um, we meet monthly to coordinate outreach and educational activities throughout the county. Okay. And currently, how large is this group? Um, we have a core group of 15 volunteers, and um, a lot of times for very specific events. Um, for instance, this summer we had a Ride for a Reason event. We actually had 21 volunteers come and assist us with that project. Okay. And of course, like with any, any volunteer organization, or most anyway, finances are always a, a battle. Right, right. right. Um, so uh, your, your group uh, is relying on the community for uh, financial support. And uh, if anyone is interested in either you know, volunteering their services or making a financial contribution, uh, is there somewhere where they can call the AIDS prevention team? Yeah, they can contact us at um, by calling 366-2839. Okay, and also uh, your group uh, does have uh, basically a speakers bureau and you can go out to organizations or schools or whatever, so if anyone's interested in having a speaker about the current AIDS problem, they can also call the same phone number? That's right, that's right, yeah. Okay. And, uh, of course, you also have a fundraiser coming up, correct? Right. Yes, we do. We have our um, annual fundraiser dinner, which is called Fine Dining with Ellen and Gary. Um, this year we're having an, an Italian theme, and uh, um, it's going to be on Friday, January 22nd, 1999, from 7 to 9 p.m. at the First Lutheran Church in St. Helens. Okay, and the tickets are being sold in advance? Yes, you can purchase tickets um, either by contacting um, the AIDS prevention team. Same phone number, right? That's correct. <laughs> um, you can contact the AIDS prevention team or you can go to the St. Helens Bookshop or Tony's Shoes. Okay, and the price for this uh, very fancy dinner <laughs> is $25 for uh, a single individual mm -hmm. and $40 for a couple? That's right. Okay. And uh, we know you've been around. Now, this is your second time here, I mm -hmm. think, at CCTV. We want to thank you for coming in and talking about the AIDS problem with us. We wish you luck uh, with your fundraiser, and we hope you get some people to volunteer to help you out. Thanks. Thank you, Gracie. Mm -hmm. Back to you, Debbie. It's definitely fall, and all the brightly colored leaves are littering the streets. St. Helens Administrator Brian Little points out the problems caused by the leaves and gives some hints for their proper disposal. Just a reminder, with all the leaves that are falling off the trees now, the city ordinance uh, prohibits the placement of leaves in the street right away. Um, the leaves that are there can uh, clog up storm rains, especially after we have some heavy rains here. And the street sweeper we have, uh, well, currently is uh, uh, under repairs, but it's also not designed to pick up large volumes of leaves. We're asking that the residents uh, not place their leaves out into the street, and that there are two alternatives. One is from the county transfer station, I'll tell you, for a fee, of course. And secondly, um, we've called First Department 397 and we are arranging for a place for composting of leaves, uh, I believe, in McCormick Park, right? Yes, correct. Yes, yeah, so in McCormick Park. So that would be a free place uh, to, uh, to take leaves and, and get rid of them. The Head Start programs gives many children a firm foundation for early school years. The local Head Start held an open house that attracted some familiar faces, and camera person Vicki Todd brings us these insights. Today, but it's my pleasure to be here on her behalf. 
Head Start is probably one of the best investments this country can absolutely make. It returns, for every dollar put in, it returns about four dollars that aren't spent, not to mention a vast start these kids get. It's, 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 uh, it's banking on our future in a way that is uh, true national security. So it's just a real pleasure to be here. And do you want to say something? Do you want to talk to anybody on the camera? Okay, she's going back to play. I'm here today with the kids and to appreciate how important it is for kids to have an opportunity like this to play and learn with other children and to get some of the skills they need for entering public school. The not only socialization, but just learning how to learn and how to have a good time. And I, it's very exciting to see the parental involvement too. I think that helps kids to get off to a really good start. So we're lucky to have this good program here. We hope we can expand it and uh, accommodate all the children in the area who are eligible for it. When we think of sports, football, basketball, and baseball come to mind. But there are many dedicated athletes in sports that we don't hear much about. Chuck Purvis visited a dedicated group of martial artists who brought home some hardware from a recent tournament. We'll do it now. We have one minute. Okay. Tension. Bow. Okay, right foot back. Snap and kick. One, two, three, four, five. Switch. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, right foot back. Turn kicks. One. Two, three, four, five. Switch. One, two, three. Okay, ready? Okay, you three in front. Ten with right leg. Ready? One, right leg. Two. Okay, we're at Chang Shoulin uh, Kung Fu School here in St. Helens with uh, Gary Mosier, the instructor. And Gary, this class of yours just came back from a recent tournament, is that right? Yes. And can you tell us, uh, did they do well? Oh, they did very well. And where was the tournament? The tournament was in Mount Hood Community College in Gresham. It was sponsored by uh, Chase Taekwondo. And it was a big regional tournament. There was over 450 uh, competitors there from Oregon, Washington. Some people came from uh, Idaho, Nevada, and California. 
Yeah, you did come home with a little bit of hardware from this tournament. Uh, I think I saw a picture, and maybe we'll be able to show that. But uh, you won numerous trophies. Yeah, we won 20 trophies. Uh, six of them were first place. And what are the ages of these people here that are participating? Well, they're anywhere from Chelsea 6 all the way up to Ben, I think, is 27, 28. Oh, seven now. Uh oh, we can't we can't forget that you're seven. Okay, well let's introduce everybody. Uh, you're Chelsea, Willie, Rachel, Amber, Peter, Dustin, Ben, Alex, Alex, Spencer. Okay, and you guys uh, really enjoy uh, participating in the tournaments, do you? Yep. Yeah. 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 And uh, you're going to be doing any more tournaments? Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. When's your next tournament? I don't know. Probably <laughs> spring. Springtime. In the spring? Okay. And do you want all the people out there to come out and watch you when you have tournaments? Yeah. 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 Sure. Yeah. Okay. What was the most exciting thing that happened uh, that any of you remember from the tournament? Sorry. 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 When, when I got, got first place, place in my fingers. fingers. Okay. One at a time. When I got first place in forms. And when I got first place in sparring. Anybody else? When I got first, when I got first place in sparring. Mm -hmm. Anybody else remember anything special? My family came to watch me. Oh, that was great, wasn't it? Mm-hmm. Okay, well, we want to congratulate all of you. And again, uh, this is Chang Sholin. I Shaolin, I got a cheat here. Kung Fu School in St. Helens, Oregon. And uh, anybody interested can call them at 397-2717, right? Yes. Jerry Mosier, the coach, and congratulations on your crew. Uh, we wish you well in the future with all your tournaments. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you, Gary. If you have a computer, then you've heard of the Y2K problem. Will the world end January 1st in the year 2000, or will there just be a minor glitch that we don't know about? But Roy Barber knows, and he shared his knowledge with the Columbia Center tech team. Where does this thing come from? Most of you probably already heard about uh, the year 2000 problem, also known as the Millennium Bug, uh, kind of shortened Y2K. Just uh, as an aside here, I found out in my research that Y2K is actually copyrighted by a Canadian company, so you might be careful about how you use that. I don't know who the company is, but this, uh, by some accounts, uh, is either the greatest short-term challenge facing our government and industry today, or it's not really a big deal. I think it kind of depends on what your, uh, what your exposure is. It can be uh, very large. It is a computer-driven data. Um, when I say computers, I'm talking about not only your PCs and mainframes, but any uh, electronic equipment that understands dates. And we'll just use that broad category of computer. It revolves around how dates are used in computer programs and how they're represented uh, in embedded systems. Now this program will be shown in full on CCTV on Wednesday, November 25th at 7.30 and check our reader board or website for other playtimes. Now the City of St. Helens will hold a very important public meeting on changes in the development code on December 16th. Here is Skip Baker with some information that concerns St. Helens residents. I'm Debbie Corsilio with CCTV Channel 9 and I'm behind the camera, but I am with Skip Baker, city planner for the city of St. Helens. Um, in the near future, there will be some public hearings coming up, Skip, I understand, regarding the development code and has to do with their periodic review. Can you tell the public uh, a little bit about what the periodic review entails and just what this development code um, is all about? Sure, be glad to. The city has a comprehensive plan, which is a, an overall plan of policies and goals and objectives of how to, uh, how to use the lands of the city and how to deal with the uh, issues that come up. And, and within that concept plan or that uh, policy plan or the comprehensive plan, there are implementing ordinances, and we have a number of them right now for subdivision uh, development, for zoning issues, uh, variances, setbacks, and so on and so forth. Uh, and over the years, some of these have gotten kind of old and outdated, haven't kept up with legislative changes, uh, or don't meet the current needs of the, of the community. 
And so a couple years ago when the state asked us to, uh, to start a periodic review and we said we would, they asked us also to take a look at implementing ordinances and to bring them up to date. And at that time we began to look at bringing all our ordinances together in what's known as a development code or one single code. Uh, and the advantages of one code is that, uh, is that instead of having a, a series of different administrative rules or a series of different appeals or violation rules or any of those types of things, you clump them all together in one grouping, uh, in one code, and then you just have sections for each of the different uh, requirements for subdivisions and partitions and conditional uses and other things. Uh, so we've been doing that for a couple, a couple years in committee form, and about uh, November 10th we started putting public hearings out in front of the Planning Commission for the public to come in and give us comments. We've had a few people come in at the November 10th, uh, and actually I think there was one in October too. And we have another one scheduled for next Tuesday night on the 24th, starting at 7 o'clock here in this, this room at the City Hall, uh, to continue taking uh, comments from the public uh, about uh, some of the suggested changes uh, that we're offering in this code. Uh, we are uh, adjusting a few things in the use uh, category. We are adjusting a few things in the size category. Uh, we are adding uh, some, uh, some uh, elements having to do with uh, requiring trees put into subdivisions or controlling trees being removed during certain types of developments. Uh, we are adding some categories for density so that uh, you, you don't have uh, a high density right next to a low density, but you have a graduated density process uh, in new development areas and established areas. Uh, we're, we're trying to make it more friendly by adding better definitions, more clear uh, standards and clear objectives to, to make it easier to make decisions for the Planning Commission and the City Council and for the public to understand it better and to make decisions for their own benefit. Uh, we're reworking uh, the conforming or the non-conforming section. Uh, we found a, a problem with some of the lands, uh, some of the lots being a little bit too small for our current code uh, and being considered non-conforming. You may have read about that or heard about it. Uh, the new code will have an adjustment for that to protect those. Uh, and we will be deleting a couple of our, of our zones that, uh, that can be combined with another zone or no longer are really being used uh, in this day and age. So all that's going on in front of the Planning Commission now. The City Council will begin to see uh, recommendations from the Planning Commission in mid-December on the 16th. They'll hold a public hearing starting at about 6.30 in the evening in this room here at City Hall. Uh, that will probably carry over until the uh, uh, next meeting in January, on the 6th of January. Uh, we haven't set a time for that continuation, but it will carry over there. And then hopefully they'll be able to deliberate that night, make a decision, and then we'll uh, uh, be able to implement that new code uh, later on in January. We have decided to hold over our web poll question of the week. Do you support the effort to build a covered grandstand at the St. Helens football field? Click on your, our website at www.columbia-center.org slash cctv and let us know how you feel. And now, here's what's featured at the Columbia Theater. And if you have questions regarding the showtimes, give them a call at 397-9791. Now we take our weekly trip to visit the good folks and volunteers at the Columbia Humane Society. If you've been thinking about getting a new dog or cat, don't buy one. We suggest that you adopt one. There are plenty of dogs and cats of all sizes and shapes to adopt. And here's our pet of the week. Hi, this happy little energetic guy here is a Jack Russell Terrier. And his name is Augie. And Augie, he's looking for a home. <laughs> he is available from Columbia County Dog Control for purchase price of $45. Augie is housebroken and he's also a, he's neutered. And anybody that knows this kind of little dog knows they have a lot of energy. Augie is actually he's a little escape artist, and that's why he's here. He's, 
<laughs> Last owners just, they couldn't handle that, I guess. But he does know where to show up. He, he showed up at the Tanglewood Apartments and looking for his people. And he's also been at, at Midway Veterinary Clinic. And in fact, that's where we picked him up. So Augie here is about, I'd say a year and a half, maybe two years old. So he's not an old dog. And that makes him all the more energetic. So. If you would like a nice, fun lap dog, this is one nice Jack Russell Terrier that we're willing to adopt out to you. And okay. This lover here is Muttley. Muttley is also available for adoption from Columbia County Animal Control. He is a, a lab retriever mix and not very old, maybe a year, year and a half. He's not housebroken, but he'd be an excellent dog for a kid, and he could live outside. He's playful and loving. He's just a very sweet dog. Mutley is available for $40, $55, and you do get $30 back once you have him uh, neutered and his rabies shots have been given. So please call. Mutley wants a home for Christmas. He's got a real waggy tail, doesn't he? Yeah, he's the darling. He's a sweetheart. He is. He's very friendly. Yeah, he, he just loves people and everything. So, I, great kids dog, I think. He looks like he, likes he would to be. Play. Like I said, he wants a home for Christmas. Anybody out there with a big heart, come and get me. And now here's this week's employment division report. This week. We have an opening for a crew chief. The salary is $11.67 an hour to $13.80 an hour, and the job is in St. Helens. We also have a job for a teacher's assistant. That pays $9.19 an hour, and the job is in Scapoos. We have a job for a worker trainee six dollars an hour that job is in columbia county have a job for a cashier six dollars an hour and the cashier job is in rainier that's 32 hours a week also have a job for a court clerk that job pays $1,797 per month to $2,293 per month, and that job is in Scapoos. We have a job for a food service assistant, $8.87 an hour. That job is part-time, and it is in Scapoos. We have a caregiver position, full-time. $6.65 an hour, the job's in St. Helens. We have a job for a choker setter, chaser, $10 to $13 an hour, depending on experience, and the job is at various locations throughout the county. And we're last looking for a warehouse worker, $6 an hour, and that job is in Rainier. And that is the Employment Division Report for this week. Well, that's it for this edition of Columbia County News, and we want to thank you very much for watching. I'm Debbie Corsilia, hoping that you have a happy Thanksgiving and inviting you back next week for more news from around the county. <laughs>